Good day, beloved in Christ. Welcome to prayer for Thursday, March the 18th. It's good to remember the depth of history of the church and the breadth of its ministry. Yesterday, we commemorated St. Patrick in ministry in the 5th century in the far reaches of Ireland, and today in the 4th century in the very birthplace of our faith, celebrating Cyril of Jerusalem. The 4th century was a time of strife in the church, and those who tried to walk a middle way between the rival factions often found themselves assailed by both sides. One of these moderates was Cyril, bishop of Jerusalem, from about the year 350 until his death 36 years later. He was the target of many intrigues, because his office made him guardian of the holy places, which in the 4th century were drawing pilgrims from all over Christendom. Cyril managed to hold on to his office without compromising his integrity and came to be venerated for his holy life and sound pastoral teaching. In fact, Cyril's pastoral teaching is the chief reason why the church has continued to honor him. Around the year 348, he delivered a course of 19 catechetical lectures to a group of people preparing to be baptized at Easter. These lectures reveal his commitment to handing on the faith just as he and the church had received it, but they also reveal his commitment to a still greater task. Cyril did more than simply provide his listeners with information about Christian doctrines. He sought to instill them with a passion for Christ, which would enable them to develop in the new life with which they were about to begin by their baptism. In so doing, he bore witness to the pastoral nature of all Christian teaching, its duty not only to communicate the faith, but also to nurture the faithful. Let us pray. O God, you called your holy bishop Cyril to preside at the altars of the heavenly Jerusalem, that he might guide your people towards the banquet of your heavenly city. Grant us so to confess your Son, that we may abound with his life and share in the fullness of his paschal mystery, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Together. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Come, let us worship God our King. Come, let us worship Christ, our King and our God, together. Come, let us worship Christ, our King and our God. Come, let us worship Christ among us, our King and our God. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us, together. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Psalm 69 is a prayer for deliverance from those who hate the psalmist. We will read verses 1 through 23. Verse 23, reminding us of Christ on the cross. They gave me gall to eat. When I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. We are going to skip verses 24 to 30, which is a series of curses upon the enemies of the psalmist. It's quite customary in the ancient world to pray blessings upon one's loved ones and friends and curses upon one's enemies. We take the instruction here that we can bear our bittermost feelings to God in prayer with the hope that that will be cathartic and turn us into agents of God's grace who can actually bless our enemies. So let us begin this prayer. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. I am sinking in deep mire. There is no firm ground for my feet. I have come into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O God, you know my foolishness. 
and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O God of Israel. Surely, for your sake, have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become like a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you, at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me, and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all in your sight. Reproach has broken my heart, and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I could find no one. They gave me gall to eat, and when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. Your help, O God, will lift me up high. I will praise the name of God in song. I will proclaim God's greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen, more than bullocks with horns and hoofs. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy, and his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in possession. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell therein. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God, our hope. You restore the fallen and rebuild the broken walls. Teach us the song of thanksgiving, for you are the strength of your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, we continue verses 12 to 27. In the first section, Paul continues to describe the difference between life in the Spirit and life according to human nature. Now, I just want to explain for a moment human nature in Paul's writing. Human nature is not just our survival instinct, our need for sleeping and eating and rest, but the nature which is contrary to God, that works in opposition to God's to God's love and God's command. So that part of us which, instead of loving our neighbors, wants to strike out in vengeance, The nature that drives us to take more than we need without remembering those who don't have. So the human nature Paul speaks of is the nature in opposition to God. The second section refers to the future glory to be revealed to the daughters and sons of God. So then, my sisters and brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to, For if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children. And by the Spirit's power we cry out to God, Father, 
my Father. God's Spirit joins God's self to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are God's children, we will possess the blessings God keeps for his people, and we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared at all with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. All of creation waits with eager longing for God to reveal his children. For creation was condemned to lose its purpose, not of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. Yet there was the hope that creation itself would one day be set free from its slavery to decay and would share the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that up to the present time all of creation groans with pain, like the pain of childbirth. But it is not just creation alone which groans. We, who have the Spirit as the first of God's gifts, also groan within ourselves as we wait for God to make us his children and set our whole being free. For it was by hope that we were saved. But if you see what we hope for, then it is not really hope. For who hopes for something one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit also comes to help us, weak as we are. For we do not know how we ought to pray. The Spirit himself pleads with God for us in groans that words cannot express. And God, who sees into our hearts, knows what the thought of the Spirit is because the Spirit pleads with God on behalf of God's people and in accordance with God's will. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God has done so many things for us. We have been made children of God by God's action, pardon, free grace granted to us. We've been adopted and brought near. Thus we can cry out to God, God our parent, God our father, God our cosmic mother, God is our parent. We've known this for a long time and we can take this for granted, but it is a great gift to be a child of the living God. We are kin, therefore. We then will possess the blessings that God has reserved for God's people. Part of this blessing is that we will be set entirely free, our whole being free, something which is beyond our imagination, really. And yet this is what we hope for, a perfect freedom, which doesn't impinge on others' freedom, but is very fulfilling in and of itself. We hope for this, and God, Paul makes it clear that we don't have it yet, or we wouldn't be hoping for the gift realized is not something one would hope for anymore. One would rejoice in it. We wait at this time for the future blessing to be revealed for us. Thus we wait with hope. And lastly, more consolation. The knowledge that the Spirit intercedes for us when we pray, but even when we cannot pray, the Spirit is interceding on our behalf according to the will of God. This is a tremendous blessing as well, to know the Spirit cries out for us. We are blessed beyond measure. Let us walk as children of the light this day. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world. The Lord grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our country, and especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, the Premier Doug Ford, and all in authority, that the Lord help them to serve this people according to his holy will. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for children and young people. The Lord guide their growth and development. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick. 
The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor for the sake of justice and truth. The Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers together, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a great day.